how does Jack get to associate with people like this and still consider himself the good guy? It comes down to how he answers this question, why do the right thing? The default answer is usually, because I am a good person. You want to call yourself a good person, doing the right thing is part of the deal. Now, a lot has already been written about how reductive this good person, bad person dichotomy is, where bad people do bad things. A sexist is a wife beater or sexual assailant. I am neither. Therefore, I am a good person, and the things I do are good. I play video games that Anita Sarkeesian says are part of sexist culture. Therefore, she is saying that I am a wife beater or sexual assailant. This is a false and ridiculous claim. Therefore, she is bad. And from there, you can rationalize all the terrible things that happen to her because she's one of the bad people. And that's a big part of the problem, but it's not what I want to talk about. I want to come back to this answer and ask you, why should it matter whether Jack is a good person or not? Because that question sure matters to Jack. For example, when Jason Rohrer released his game The Castle Doctrine, it got some flack for how it handled its wife mechanic. You play as a man trying to protect his family with security systems, and if a robber makes it through your security, your wife tries to escape with half your money. The robber then has to murder her to get it. Meanwhile, you're off breaking into other people's houses and trying to murder their wives. So, feminists spoke up and said, hey, Reducing the only female presence in the game to a resource you have to murder to double your money is kind of fucked up. Rohrer then explained his intentions, that the game was meant as a critique of toxic male culture, and feminists countered that his critique was functionally indistinguishable from an example of toxic male culture. So Rohrer continued to explain, and explain, and explain his intentions, and fans of the game jumped in to explain, no, really, he wasn't trying to be sexist. Jason Rohrer is not a bad person, and subtextually, and I'm not a bad person, for liking the Castle Doctrine. And the problem I have with this mode of thinking is that it's entirely obsessed with the quality of a person's character. Who is the good person and who's the bad person? It's understandable that Jack has this intense fear of being judged because his entire notion of right and wrong is centered around casting judgments. It's, for lack of a better word, puritanical. That doesn't mean that Jack is Christian or even particularly religious. I mean, once again. Research. It's just a common default way of thinking in Western society. I could hazard that it's because puritanical religion was one of colonialist Europe's biggest exports, and now it's just kind of everywhere, but that's just my gut talking. And I have no idea if it's common in other cultures, I'm just calling it Western to play safe. But the way a lot of us operate is, you know, do right things that are obviously right, avoid wrong things that are obviously wrong, and when you hit a gray area, ask, well, what would a good person do? And that thinking seems to originate from the idea that it's imperative to maintain your moral integrity. So Jack is making all these judgment calls as though he expects to eventually stand in front of St. Peter outside the pearly gates, or Anubis outside the underworld, and have them assess his moral integrity. They'll read off his list of decisions and ask him to account for them. Here's all the good things he did, here's all the things he knew were bad, and when they get to those gray areas, they have the answers in the back of the book. So, Jack, institutional sexism. Totally a thing, as it turns out. Why'd you play all those sexist video games? And what it comes down to is that Jack is okay if he can credibly say, I didn't realize. I did the best I could with what I knew. Again, it's not that everyone literally believes this, or that anyone who does is stupid. Just that we often operate under this belief, that it is acceptable to do wrong things and still be a good person, provided you do them in innocence. That's what this is all about. Not popping the bubble, not going to the doctor, not listening to feminists. It's about preserving innocence. If you don't know it's wrong, you're not bad for doing it. And if you don't believe me, think about buying habits. Most of us are vaguely aware that a lot of popular shoes are assembled in sweatshops, and most of us don't really go out and read up on the subject, find out how bad conditions are in the sweatshops, which brands are the worst offenders, and which brands are quote-unquote safe. And we don't look that stuff up because if we had that information, we'd probably feel we couldn't in good conscience keep buying the shit we're buying. But we can, so long as we don't have the information. We're still innocent, even if it's a willful innocence. 
And if we have that friend who buys different shoes, who has the information and tries to share it with us, we often resent them. And yes, we resent them in part because we assume they're judging us, but also because they're trying to rob us of our innocence. Going out of your way to read about how shoes get made is consciously choosing to make yourself less happy. The question of what a good person should do gets more and more complicated the older we get, which may be why so many people get nostalgic for the past, why the modern gamer idolizes the 90s, and why America idolizes the 50s, and why so many people idolize their childhoods. Of course, the modern image of 90s gamer culture or the Leave it to Beaver 50s is bullshit, history as viewed by the victors. Things were totally fucked up back then, it was just taboo, or sometimes dangerous, to acknowledge it publicly. And I don't know about your childhood, but mine was not idyllic. Most children are monsters to each other. It's just sort of okay because they don't know any better. Be good is a very uncomplicated notion of morality. So let's talk about an answer to this question that's more useful to adults. Why do the right thing? Because it makes the world better. These are the more pragmatic terms a lot of activists think in. What is the effect your actions will have on the world? That lens reframes a lot of these questions. Is Jason Rohrer good or bad? And is Jack good or bad for liking his game? Well, really, those aren't even the right questions. Rohrer's game has a problematic thing in it. Did he mean it? Did he not mean it? It's still the same game, and it's not like players have Rohrer there to explain his intentions. So we have to talk about it. No one wants to ban the game or crucify the developer. It's not even really about him. This good person, bad person debate may mean something for Jack or Jason's peace of mind, but it just doesn't do much for anyone else. Who's right about the shoes? The person who buys them or the person who doesn't? Well, really, the buying habits of these two people don't change much. I mean, maybe if one was organizing a widespread boycott, but really you'd have to look into the market forces that make sweatshop products desirable, and the economic forces that drive people to work in them, and is denying money to this one company really the best way to affect change? Maybe you should be calling your congressperson? Real world problems are complicated, and individual actions are weak, and small failings compound when lots of people fail in the same way. Truly doing the right thing, or just a right thing, might take impressive amounts of work. And yeah, that gives me this gross, sick, powerless, sinking feeling in my stomach, but that's adulthood. When he hears Anita Sarkeesian talk, Jack gets all these awful feelings, and it's only a short hop to thinking that Sarkeesian's purpose in speaking at all is to make him feel that way, that she wants him to feel guilty and powerless. But the truth terrifies him even more, that Anita Sarkeesian doesn't care how he feels. I mean, that's not exactly true. Sarkeesian has chosen to drop sarcasm and humor from her videos in favor of a more diplomatic tone, in part to anticipate Jack's knee-jerk reactions. It's not like enjoying imperfect games makes him a horrible person. No one expects him to hate them. It's both possible, and even necessary, to simultaneously enjoy media while also being critical of its more problematic or pernicious aspects. It's just that, ultimately, her point is that there are these things we do in games, and they aren't always individually problems, but their pervasiveness is a problem, and that needs to stop. We can feel good about that, we can feel bad about it, but either way, it needs to stop. Jack hates this line of thinking. Anita Sarkeesian is like Copernicus, telling him he's not the center of his moral universe. That sounds like I'm calling him selfish, and I basically am. But a lot of us are raised to be selfish in precisely this way. To treat morality as being about saving yourself. To treat the real-world value of your actions as less important than what these things say about you and what you meant to do. Jack frames the question of, do I go to the doctor and find out if it's skin cancer, and do I seek out feminist criticism to find out if my games are sexist, as fundamentally the same question, do I do what's good for me? What eludes him is that one of these questions is not just about doing the right thing. It's a thing other people actively need from him. As long as he operates in this mindset, even acknowledging that Sarkeesian could be right is accepting that he's a participant in sexist culture. In his world, that makes him one of the bad people. It means he's doomed. 
it may be frustrating trying to talk to him when he gets so worked up over fairly basic information. But to him, this is, in a way, battling for his soul. And until he can accept the idea that morality is bigger than him, he is incapable of listening. 